and all of you on this beautiful Sunday morning. We shall begin our worship uh, with our, our choral intro. As we sing this song together, may we prepare our hearts and invite the presence of the divine here in our midst. join me in the call to worship is found on your screen. In the fire and the flames. In the division and in the despair. Christ to rise to and in the shadows and the sorrow. God walks alongside to lift us up. In this moment, we gather together to worship, to pray, to sing, and to lament. We gather on this blessed journey of life, death, and resurrection. And if you'll pray the opening prayer with me. God of grace and mercy, bless us with your presence this day. Reveal your way forward and guide us in pathways of hope and grace. In your blessed name we pray. Amen. And our opening hymn this morning is Morning Has Broken. Uh, you can find the words on your screen. If you're in the sanctuary this morning, it is found in the United Methodist Hymnal on page 145. And if you'll stand as able.
has broken to give us an another beautiful day. May you feel the presence of God, God's grace that's poured upon so abundantly to each and all of you. And it is always a wonderful thing for God's people of many walks to come together to pray, to sing, and to hear the word that we may grow together in our faith and in our commitment to love God and serve others. So welcome. I just wanted to welcome to each and all of you here, but also welcome to all those who might be worshiping at homes in other places. So now we'd like to go together to the time of prayer. May we open our hearts and our minds that we might hear what God is speaking to our hearts this morning. Let us pray. Well, God, we give you thanks for this beautiful morning. And thank you for this time of silence when we are able to tune ourselves to you, yearning to hear your word and your guidance and your assurance and your hope. Please be in our midst. Speak to our, our hearts in a special way that we might be encouraged, comforted, commissioned to go out to live out our faith each and every day. Thank you for your daily guidance in our lives. You are with us when things are going great. But you are also with us when we face the greatest challenge and walk the dark valley in our lives. May we always trust in your care and confidently move forward, live each and every day with you. God, we're here this morning with many prayer concerns and requests that we are carrying in our hearts. So now we lift up those up to you. Lord, hear our prayer. Ronnie Light. Eva Marsley. John Cranage. Mm -hmm. Marilyn Wayne. Debbie Fault. Steve Michael. Well, God, we give you thanks that you hear our prayers and you answer them in your special ways, in your timely manners. Well, God, this morning we continue to lift up all brothers and sisters who might be facing health challenges, facing other types of challenges in life, feeling burdened, stressed, or wear down. And all the persons who might be facing the changes in life, or, or those who might have to make major decisions in life, and all the persons who are needing your guidance. Those who are feeling lonely and cannot find a community to belong. And all the persons who are facing the aftermath of natural disasters. All those who are living under the fear of violence, war, or any dysfunction. and all the persons who are lonely. Oh God, we continue to lift up Greenwood Church and all, each and all the persons who are part of this community. Thank you for being in their lives. I just ask that, that we would continue to learn and grow in faith 
that in our lives, in special ways, we might shine your light to this world each and every day. Please continue to guide us, both as individuals and as a congregation. And continue to lift up this community, country, and the world. Again, especially we pray for all the persons who are facing fear, violence, or divisions, or hatred. And all the persons who are needing your guidance, your mercy, your strength. Remember all the persons who might be needing the basic necessities. And all your children who needs your guidance and your peace in their lives. So please be with us each and every day. That in a special and unique ways, we might be able to serve you and all your people. Thank you, Jesus, for being in our lives each and every day. So now the people of God, let us come together and pray together the Lord's Prayer. The prayer Jesus told us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and glory forever. Amen. Amen. So now I'd like to invite each and all of you to recite together on what we believe. We tried this uh, statement uh, of faith last Sunday, and so I'd like to continue one more Sunday. It is that... Uh, our faith summarized in a, like today's language that, that, you know, we might, it's easier for us to understand and say together. So please, if you're able, join us, uh, please stand and join us reciting the statement of our faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and ridden, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. Well, at this time, I'd like to invite all the students and the family to the front for the blessing on the backpack. And uh, all the staffs that are working in school, teachers, staff, and all that. Please, 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 everyone. All right. Um, well, who... Do you mind passing that to the kids oh, yeah. here too, please? Yes, please. And everybody, you might have a, a pink sheet. I'll just ask you to pull it up. And we'll begin with the side that says blessing of the backpack on top. So please, I'll flip that. So it is such a blessing for us to be able to celebrate with these students as they begin or have already begun their school year. So we just wanted to remind each and all the students that they are loved, and this church loves each and all the persons. And I pray that, that this school year is going to be another exciting one so that you will grow and learn and to become a great people that God has called you to be. So anyway, we would like to begin with the blessing, and we will begin with the, the reading. So there's a, a, we begin with the, all the elementary or younger students. So if you are able to join, please join me. Are you guys ready? All right. Bless my paper and my pen. I don't hear you. Okay. Look right there. Right there. Right there. Okay. If you're able to read, old enough to read. Yeah. We'll, we'll begin again. Okay. 
One, two, three. Bless my paper and my pen. Guide me every day. Help me think and help me play this whole school year, day by day. Everybody respond. Gracious God, we lift to you today these students. Bless and guide them as they learn and grow. And the older students, middle high, middle school, high school, one, two, three. In every subject, high or low, may God's excellence be shown. Keep me strong to reach the prize, to grow in grace, becoming wise. Gracious God, we lift to you today these students. Bless and guide them as they learn and grow. Whether far from home or near, may I, go, may I hold God's precepts dear. To do my best at every task, for this blessing I do ask. Gracious God, we lift to you today these students. Bless and guide them as they learn and grow. Amen. On the back side, uh, there is a prayer. The first one is for all the students that are here. So please, uh, join me in prayer. Lord, bless these backpacks and the children and youth who carry them as they begin yet another year of school. Give them peace when they feel nervous, focus when they feel distracted, energy when they smile. Open their minds to the lessons they will learn, both in and outside a classroom. Help them to make friends that build one another up and be friends to those who need them. Guide them in making good choices as they grow in wisdom and maturity. Be ever present in the classroom, on the school bus, on the playground, and at home, and may they feel your loving care in all they do. Amen. So the next prayer is for all the staff, teachers, where is that at? Oh, Ed, you're missing here too. Anyway, so all the persons who are uh, involved in teaching or caring for students in many different ways. So let us pray for this, for teachers and all school staff. Let us pray. Lord, bless those in the ministry of teaching future generations as they embark on a new school year. Grant them energy, passion, discipline, and endurance for their daily tasks. Infuse their classrooms with an atmosphere of care and mutual respect that all interactions there will be bathed in patience and understanding. Help their lessons to grow pupils in both knowledge and character and help us all to support the work these teachers do, building up our community and our future. Amen. So many blessings to each and all of you, and God is always with you, but don't leave yet. I uh, have a little reminder for all students. So um, if moms and dads, uh, if, you, uh, if your student is very small, just please be careful with uh, the little pieces or whatever. But there you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Here you go. Here you go. Have a great school year. Have a great school year. Here you go. Mm -hmm. Here you go. And it's a little mess on that to remind you that we. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, and may God's blessings always be with you. Okay. Now, uh, would you like to do the children's message? Might as well. All right. So Mr. Steve is going to have a message. Go. Good morning, children. My goodness. That is awesome. I love seeing this many kids here. Guess where I've been the last three days? Hershey Park, the sweetest place on earth. Who's been there? Well, I can tell you this. As the holder of the credit card, 
Hershey Park is a great example of real life because you have to start making decisions as soon as you get there. You can even pay more to park if you want to pay, get closer. And then when you walk in there, everybody needs a ticket, but then you can get a ticket that bumps your ticket up to this thing they call fast track. And for a measly $180, you can skip all the lines. And then it comes to the food and the drinks. Do I get the big thing that I can refill all the time? It's crazy, but it's so much fun. And what I learned yesterday is it goes with our scripture, is that money in life is important. Because if you're wealthy, you can have a lot of fun at an amusement park. If money doesn't matter, you can upgrade everything. In our scripture lesson this morning, we're talking about King David. And guess what King David had? He had lots of money. He was a king. He could do whatever he wanted to. But guess what his money wouldn't let him do? His money would not let him cleanse his heart. So he could do whatever he wanted to, but at the end of the day, he felt bad because he wasn't doing the things that God wanted him to do and needed him to do. God needs us every day. Every day we get on the bus, every day we go into the classroom, every day we go to recess, God wants us to be nice and to be loving and to be caring and to share. He also wants us to have fun. So when we go to school this week, remember every day that what matters in your heart will make your day much better and money cannot buy that. So, let's pray. Heavenly Father, please cleanse our hearts and let us do what is right in your sight. Amen. Let's go to Children's Church or the nursery. This is awesome. I love seeing this many kids. Yeah, we can leave the book bags here and our goodies here. Thanks, everyone. Again, special blessings to each and all of those students. Thank you for being here today. So now we come to the time we share special pictures, uh, the special things that are happening in our lives. Yes, Connor is bringing the mic to Rhody. Rhody, if you'd like to speak about this first picture. Well, they're all my wonderful great-grandchildren. They had... Well, Easton didn't want to go to school, but Delilah and Noah have just moved to Winchester City Schools, so it's a whole new thing for them. Uh, Jace is the blasé child. He's just too cool. And Easton is my man. There's, there's my boy. <laughs> That's great. Well, thank you so much for sharing that photos and many... Special things would happen to each and all of them. Thank you, Rhody. So the next picture that you're seeing is actually Mr. Birthday is in the house this morning. Richard had his 80th birthday. Was it that, that August the 6th? Is that right? Yeah. Happy birthday to Richard. Yay. And I know that the, uh, we have already mentioned it, but today is... Uh, Miss, uh, oh my gosh, Charlotte, I'm sorry, I was looking at you like, Miss Charlotte's 39th birthday. <laughs> and I know that there are a couple of others. Uh, I know Tracy had a birthday yesterday. And if I missed anybody, happy birthday to each and all of you or coming up. Many blessings. And would you like to say a word about the pictures, Richard or Marsha? Okay, good. I know that the... Uh, your uh, great-granddaughters uh, decorated the, uh, the house, I think uh, Marsha told us. So, well, many blessings to you, Richard. And uh, Marsha, your brother, Marshall. The next picture that you're seeing is that this uh, weekend, uh, Friday and Saturday, uh, many of our friends uh, worked hard over at the fire hall. And it was a 
beautiful day, both days, on that. But anyway, I just wanted to uh, share some pictures. There's Ed frying ham, and uh, uh, Pat and Marsha again sitting, and uh, Jody and her daughter working hard. So it's great. And uh, there's one more picture, so I think. that Those are from yesterday, Pam and Tammy, of course. And, of course, the outdoor crew once again. And is that true that the we Ed, you said that the we got the most dessert. Is that right? Yes. Okay, good. I thank you, Walt. So thank you. We apparently that the Good Samaritan Cross is going to come in back to Greenwood Church. So yay. <laughs> Great job, everyone. <laughs> so Tammy took a picture of all the, the persons who are the names and uh, how many items that they donated. So thank you so much if you have uh, helped with uh, providing the desserts. So thank you so much. And, uh, and the next slide that you're seeing is a, a quick reminder. A Green Choir is going to practice on Wednesday, August the 17th at 7 p.m. here at the church. So if you'd like to join in creating beautiful noises for the Lord, please come to the practice. And here's a couple of upcoming special events. That the first one is the joint outdoor worship. It's going to be Sunday, September the 11th at 10 o'clock. Note, the time is different, uh, at Jim Barnett Park. We are going to meet again at Lo Rotary Shelter, which was the big one, kind of in the middle of the park. So please uh, mark your calendar now, and I'm hoping we would uh, have a great weather like today. By the way, it's rain or shine, so it's a covered shelter. So we'll meet regardless, and we plan to do a little potluck afterwards. So I just ask you to bring something to share for all uh, brothers and sisters. The next picture, the uh, slide that you're seeing is that we are starting a special study called the Big Picture. Um, it is about uh, based on the story of Joseph from Genesis, which if you have helped at the Vacation Bible School this year, you are very, very familiar with all the stories and ups and downs that the Joseph had gone through. But uh, it is a uh, new study, and I thought it was a, a good study. It's a husband and wife pastor couple. They take turn each like a lesson and talk about different uh, lesson each week. It's a five-week series starting on September the 18th. And I plan to do the sermon series on this uh, subject, but also uh, we do uh, offer a class for you to join. Sunday night at 7, this is going to be a Zoom class, and we'll make sure that all of you have a link. And also Tuesday mornings at 10 a.m. here at Greenwood Church, it's an in-person class. So please, I hope that the, you will join and uh, learn and grow together. There's a little a promo video Ashley has prepared, so if you would play that for us. Life is not as easy as a connect the dots puzzle. It can feel like a scattering of random events. Various choices, opportunities, and even pain that seems to have no real purpose or connection. But if we pay attention to God's Word, our lives can tell a different story. I'm Javon Caldwell-Gross. And I'm Nicole Caldwell-Gross. And we are pastors in Indiana and the authors of The Big Picture, seeing God's dream for your life. A book and five-week Bible study based on the story of Joseph in Genesis will take a closer look at the life of Joseph to discover God's presence in moments of triumph and trauma. We will rediscover the presence of God in our lives and start connecting the dots, seeing how God has been present and is very active in our lives today, and start to see the big picture of what God is and will do in your life. Even if you don't see it coming. I would uh, like to invite each and all of you for, to study, to learn together, and grow together. Even if you cannot make it all five weeks, Please come whenever you're able. Most of those uh, classes are independent on its own. So even if you miss a Sunday or two or a lesson or two, you can still join and learn something. So thank you. 
The next picture that you're seeing is from yesterday. I had a chance to go to the apple gleaning, uh, and we have seen a couple of our friends from Market Street Church, because I just wanted to kind of share them with you. Beautiful morning, beautiful day. So anyway, and uh, yeah, so that's a, it was a green apple, but it was, it was great. I mean, so one of the gentlemen, that gentleman in uh, orange was saying, oh, today's a lucky day, because we were uh, asked to actually pick from the tree instead of, new, like, you know, going down on the ground to go through, you know, like, so anyway, so it was a, a great uh, day of uh, volunteering, and uh, so anyway, speaking of which, next slide, please, it is this season, so we are, may, we'll make sure that the, uh, all the gleaning information that you may have, it is a wonderful uh, service opportunity, great for families, um, so I hope that the, you can join and then participate in helping, just using your hands and feet to help others eat. So, so if you have any uh, special pictures to share, please uh, send it to me directly, or there's an uh, email address for the uh, church, which is umcgreenwood at gmail.com. And uh, if you could do that by Friday, uh, that would be great. Uh, we have some follow-up and uh, completing and uploading and all that stuff that the uh, mostly Ashley uh, has to do, so thank you. So we already uh, had a moment with children, so we would like to uh, move on to the reminder for our, our giving. Our giving and tithe uh, can be mailed to the church, address is shown, or if you are worshiping in the house, there's an uh, offering basket placed at the back of the sanctuary on your way out. So please, uh, I thank you for your generosity. I thank you for your stewardship. Now please join me as we dedicate those gifts back to the Lord. Let us pray. Oh God, we give you thanks for your many gifts that you give in many different ways. It is time for us to bring those gifts back to you. We pray that the, you accept our gifts, bless our gifts, and use our gifts so that your children might know you and your grace. Thank you for many ways that you guide us each and every day. We thank you. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. So now, please join me that prayer for elimination, which you see on the screen. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Keiko asked me to read this, the scripture this morning, and Psalm 51 contains one of my favorite verses in all the Psalms. Verse 10, create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Pretty good prayer for any day. Psalm 51, have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins. Blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. 
Do good to Zion in your good pleasure. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings, the whole burnt offerings, and the bulls will be offered on your altar. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much, Reverend Charles. Well, recently I read the book title. This looks like this. The Power of Regret. How Looking Backward Moves Us Forward. Anybody has read it by any chance? Okay. I bought this in an uh, airport in Munich. I wanted to buy some, one last something from Germany, and I ended up buying, <laughs> might as well, I just bought a book. But anyway, um, everyone has regrets. What is yours? I surely do have several, but I'm not going to get into it today. Whatever they might be, know that the regrets are universal and they are a crucial part of our lives. According to American Regret Project, which was actually conducted by the author uh, in 2021, most common regrets about, are about family, partners, education, career, finance, health, and friends. Well, most, all areas of life, it sounds like. And the author continues, while each person has regrets that are unique to him or her, there are four general categories of regrets. The first one is called foundation regrets. It is like, a, I should have worked harder or prepared better or taking a better care of myself, that type of regrets. Second one is the boldness regrets. I wish I would have taken the opportunity to go, go to college or study overseas, or pursued my dreams instead of conforming to what somebody else told me to do. That kind of regrets. And the third one is moral regrets. Maybe you might immediately think of like cheating or being unfaithful, but also teasing somebody in school as a kid, or even not fulfilling one's loyalty, for example, not serving in the armed forces. Those kind of uh, regrets uh, can be considered to be moral regrets. And uh, lastly, connection regrets, like unable to reconcile with your parents, or not spending enough time, or not being a better friend or sibling or child. And I wondered, why do we regret in the first place? Sure, uh, past, you're looking back, everything looks kind of, you know, there's a clear way that the, you could have done better or differently. But uh, I want the bottom line, we regret on various things because somewhere in our hearts, we believe that, that we could do better. We could be more compassionate, more courageous. Whether the things that we did or something that we didn't do Maybe we see a gap between by who we could have been and who we were. Or say, how we were called to live and how we did live. The bit, like if we see that like a gap or discrepancies between the two. At the same time, we tend to look back because we want to trust that there is Redemption, second chances, new start. Indeed, Kierkegaard once said, life can be only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forwards. While we are not able to change the past, we might be able to change the future. Maybe that's why we look back and committing ourselves to do better. And perhaps the author of today's psalm might have felt the same way. Today's uh, psalm, which Reverend Charles read, Psalm 51, is one of the better known psalms, especially if you have attended Ash Wednesday service in any given year. You probably have heard it or read it or pre, uh, heard it preached on. 
It is categorized as individual lament psalms, so asking God for help. But specifically, Psalm 51 is counted as one of the seven penitential psalms, so like a repenting, uh, repenting kind of psalms. The author, whether David himself or a Hebrew author who knew the story of 2 Samuel, he, uh, the author begins, Have mercy on me, O God, for I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you and you only have I sinned and done which is evil in your sight. Sounds brutally honest, doesn't it? And brutally true. Because whether intentional or unintentional, individual or communal, we all have missed the mark. Sometimes slightly, other times big times. Yes? Yes. Me too. The people in the scripture were no exception. For example, the people of Israel. God's chosen special people. Their stories are like the long list of mistakes in God's redemption. German theologian Klaus Westermann once said that the Exodus 32 through 34 proves, proves to be the paradigmatic of the whole history of Israel. In other words, the story of golden calf, Moses' intercession, and God's covenant was being renewed. Those are the a typical cycle, so that the God goes away from God's ways, they get in trouble, and there's a, a messenger that tells how to return to the Lord, and God redeems God's people. It seems like a, that is like the cycle throughout the Hebrew Bible. Sure, King David's affair with Bathsheba, which oftentimes associated with this psalm, is very well known. But most of the kings that followed him missed the mark as well. Remember last Sunday we talked about the very typical description of most of these kings are, he did evil in the eyes of the Lord. But not just the Hebrew Bible that we see people missing the mark. So were the disciples in the Gospels. Remember Peter said to Jesus, even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And within the chapter, you know what happens. So were the situations in the early church. So were the people of God throughout times and places. And we, God's people today, miss the mark as well. In short, the psalmist's confession here, one form or another, is the truth about human condition. One scholar once said, sin occurs in that moment when we realize that God is God and we are not. In other words, this is our cries as humans. The good news is, this psalm is not all about the bad news of sinful, frail human conditions. The psalmist continues that. God not only, not only helps us acknowledge our shortcomings and the way that we did it wrong, but also allows us to humbly come before God, asking God to change our hearts, making us clean, and helping us to become who we are created to be. Verses 10 through 12 is a summary of such petition. So we like to read it together one more time. I know Reverend Charles read it, but just join me in reading those verses. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. With God's grace, we can have clean hearts. 
With God's grace, we have given the right spirit. With God's grace, we receive redemption. With God's grace, we are given second chances to become the people God has created us to be. One of the commentaries summarized this concept well. Quote, By the grace of God, a persistently disobedient people become partners with God in an everlasting covenant. By the grace of God, dull and disobedient disciples of Jesus become known as those who have turned the ups world upside down. By the grace of God, Saul, the former murderer, become Paul, ambassador for Christ. Grace is fundamental. That is the good news. End of quote. Indeed, Apostle Paul wrote in one of his letters, If anyone is in Christ, there's a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciled the world to himself and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So as a reconciled and renewed and forgiven people, what do we humans do as a response? All we could do is turn before God, kneel ourselves, and give our God our utmost and most sincere glory and thanksgiving. And that's exactly what the psalmist did here. He writes, Deliver me from violence, God, God of my salvation, so that my tongue can sing of your righteousness. Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will proclaim your praise. So as we ponder this powerful psalm, I'd like us to remember to do two things. First, may we honestly and humbly acknowledge who we are. We are frail, imperfect human beings living in a broken world. We can be so selfish, yet so selfish. We can be so compassionate, yet so insensitive to others' pain. But the opposite is also true. We might be ignorant, yet we are capable of offering our crying shoulders. We may be self-centered at times, yet we are capable of standing up for justice for somebody else's sake. We may be sinful, but through God's grace, we may be able to become the agents of God's reconciliation and hope in this world. But first and foremost, we must acknowledge who we are and face our weaknesses and our limitations. Bishop Williamson once said this powerful words, quote, We can never be who God wants us to be without some degree of self-awareness and self-knowledge. If we can allow ourselves to be unmasked, then our true faces can be seen. If we don't openly confess our sin, we are doomed perpetually to re rearrange reality so that it conforms to our self-deceit, end of quote. The first and the most critical step is to recognize who we are and whose we are. Second, with new hearts and clean spirit given only through God's grace, we ought to make our lives count. In other words, how we live today matters. 
We are called to live each and every day by trusting that the Lord will lead and guide us. We are called to live striving to be the people of peace, forgiveness, and reconciliation. We are called to use what we are given, our gifts and graces, and our passions, to touch others' lives so that others might also find the grace of God and God's willingness to make our hearts renewed. There's a poem I have shared on the Ash Wednesday service back in 2020. I believe that the, this poem sort of summarizes what I'm trying to say. And yes, because it was an Ash Wednesday poem, uh, there's a somber truth about our mortality. But I think this has a very powerful message to all of us. The original source is unknown, but I'm just going uh, to go ahead and uh, let me uh, recite this to you today. Every minute, someone leaves this world behind. We are all in the line without knowing it. We never know how many people are before us. We cannot move, the back, move to the back of the line. We cannot step out of the line. We cannot avoid the line. So while we wait in line, make moments count. Make priorities. Make the time. Make your gifts known. Make a nobody feel like a somebody. Make your voice heard. Make the small things big. Make someone smile. Make the change. Make peace. Make sure to have no regrets. Make sure that you are ready. And above all else, make sure that you tell your people that they are loved, that they are f your faith is strong. May the grace of God and love of Christ Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you and always give you the strength and the hearts to be open, that you might openly say, Lord, I messed up. I need your help. Give us the clean hearts. Give us your redemption so we might live anew. Thanks be to God. Amen. So now, as we remember the grace of God and God's daily guidance, may we sing together the closing hymn today, He Leadeth Me, O Blessed Thought. If you like to follow the music, it's 128 of your United Methodist hymnal. Please stand as you're able and join in singing.
I forgot to mention earlier, thank you for Connor for filling in for this, uh, this morning. Beverly had a family obligation and have to be away, so thanks. May the grace of Jesus Christ, love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you, go with you, and always give you peace. Amen.